What's going on AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. For those that are new around here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. In this video guys, I'm going to be covering all the news, all the relevant names, and who you should be targeting going into round 6 of the AFL Fantasy season. So we've hit round six of the AFL season and with that comes a lot of excitement in terms of AFL fantasy. We've just been gifted the new dual position players and at this stage of the season, it's when you should really be starting to get your first upgrades into your side. So at this stage, I'd be looking to do a one down, one up approach this week. In saying that, I think now's the time you want to be focusing on underpriced premiums and less on mid-priced players. Therefore, guys like Markov, Hind, Scholl, Cumming, Ash, GF, I wouldn't be looking at these guys this week. I think we've missed the boat on those guys. You should be looking onward and to better scoring, more reliable and consistent players. So... In saying that, we'll jump straight into who I think are the main priorities to get out of your side this week. Obviously, if you've got Jordan Degoe, he won't be playing this week. He's been a failed pick and he's a number one priority to move on this week. Guys like Jordan Clark, Braden Campbell, he's maxed out in price and, and may get rested this week. Fantasia can go. James Jordan can potentially go. These are the sort of guys you want to look at downgrading and or upgrading this week. A couple other names you can consider. Tom Phillips is one that's underperformed and is one that a few people are throwing around as a name to chop this week. Personally, I'm not a fan of this move. I think that while Phillips hasn't been great, the capability to score 80 to 90 is still there and... He should be able to score okay going forward. So while he's a trade, I don't think now is the best time to do it. There's rookies on the field that are scoring 40 to 50, and I think they're a bigger priority to move on at this stage. A couple other names, we have Sarong. Similar to Phillips, he's underperformed this year. You can probably look to move him on, but I also have hope that Sarong will come good at some stage. And with Chera now out, potentially we see Sarong's time on ground increase and this might be what he needs to get back to that level that we saw at the back end of last year. He's one that you could choose to upgrade this week or hold. Both are good options. Then we have Goulden. Same thing with Jordan and Campbell. He's maxing out in price now and we need these rookies off the field, so... I don't have a problem moving Goulden early if it's a move that enables you to get that extra cash to get that upgrade that you're looking to bring in this week. A couple other names, we have Tex Walker and Seb Ross. So Tex is maxed out now. He has that calf complaint, so that might hold him back from this point. His scoring won't be fantastic going forward, in my opinion. So I think you bank the cash now and you get off board. Seb Ross, like many other players, failed mid-pricer, and these are the guys that you should be looking to upgrade. A couple other relevant names. We have Patrick Dangerfield and Lockie Jones. So both of these guys are now out for an extended period. Jones is set to miss four weeks, and Dangerfield possibly one month, potentially two months. Both those guys could potentially pose as issues for you this week. We also have Matt Flynn. So Flynn from GWS, most people have him and he's been confirmed to play by Leon Cameron. So we can expect him to line up for GWS this week, which may help some coaches out. But if you'd followed my previous advice on other trade talk videos, I suggested that by this stage, you should probably be riding Flynn on the bench. He's going to be in and out of the side and therefore he's unreliable to have on the field. 
In terms of what rookies I'd be looking at to bring in, I think the number one guy is Finlay McRae. While he didn't go huge last week, the signs were there that he's got the potential. He got thrown on ball quite heavily in the last quarter, which saw him rack up 12 disposals and 32 fantasy points. I think that we can see him play more midfield going forward. Greenwood's out this week. Adams is out long term. His job security is great. They're going to want to develop him. So going forward, he's probably going to be the most reliable rookie. And he's definitely got that scoring capability to be an on-field guy as well. So if you don't have him, he's the one I'd be going to. I quite like Will Kelly if he gets named this week, which I'm expecting he will. His job security is going to be great. We could potentially see him go down back, which is interesting. But whilst I don't think his scoring is going to be fantastic, the job security factor is why I'd be bringing him in. At this stage, rookies are in and out, and you want guys that are going to be around there long term, especially going into the buyers as cover for you. So he's one that I'd potentially jump on first up. We then have Miles Bergman. I was a little less keen on Bergman, but now that we've seen Jones is out for a month, I'm a little less worried about his job security. Obviously, it looks like Pau Pepper's going to come in. Potentially, Rockliffe comes in. If Houston holds his spot uh, due to hit that shoulder injury, it's looking like Port have got a pretty strong list, and therefore Bergman was probably the first guy on the outer. But with Jones out, it might open that spot for him. He's shown he can score 60+. plus. He's got the lowest break even, and if he does play, he's going to make the most cash this week. The fact that he got defender dual position status as well has now given him that extra value. And whilst he is inflated in price, I think he's still a great option. We then have Farah from Gold Coast. I'm a little less bullish on Farah. I think his job security is a bit iffy. And last week, the ball spent a lot of time in the Gold Coast back 50. I don't expect those scores to be like that consistently. Night games at the Gold Coast, it's dewy, the ball's slippery. I just don't think that we're going to see great scoring going forward. He's potentially one that I'd look to fade on, but he's also one you can bring in as well. He's not my cup of tea personally, but there's limited options available and he does have a minus three break even. So he will make cash short term. But you just need a plan to be able to offload him and capitalise on that cash generation as he may not hold his spot in the side for too long. And lastly, we have R2 Bossen of Luji. I think that's how you say his name. I've probably absolutely butchered that, to be fair. But I thought his game was quite good for North. Obviously, Aaron Hall's out with concussion. McDonald's out long term. North are rebuilding, they're giving games to young players, and for that reason, I think he'll get a decent crack at it. Whilst his second half last week was a bit quiet, I thought the first half he showed great signs, and therefore, while he won't be a super scorer, he's still quite cheap, and he will tick along and make some coin there for you. So he's just a bench option, but he's definitely one that I'd probably consider. As for other rookies I'd look out for this week, we have Jay Rantau from Collingwood, ready-made body, should be able to score quite well, but I'm not quite sure if he's ready to come in just at this stage. We have Riley Collier-Dawkins from the Tigers. He's one that has always been floating around the fantasy community, but just never gets a crack. We could see him come in this week. And then lastly, we have Liam Stocker from the Blues. So, Stocker, I think, could be a good option, but he is 242k, and that comes with a higher break-even off the bat. So we could just get a look at him first, see how he goes, see how he performs, whether or not his performance looks to consolidate his job security or not, and just get a decent look at him before jumping on board, in my opinion. As I stated earlier in the video, guys, I think this week's all about chasing those underpriced premiums, and therefore, I'm going to spend quite a bit of time emphasizing the guys in what zones 
that I'd be targeting. So first up, we have the midfield. And I think the main guys you want to be targeting here are Tom Mitchell, Lockie Neal, Adam Trelaw. Those three, they're all underpriced. They've all got more to offer. They're all as low as they're going to get. So I'd be looking to chase one of those three if you're looking for a midfield option. On the cheaper side, we also have Andrew Brayshaw and Darcy Parrish. So while I'm a little less bullish on these guys, just because I don't think they're top eight midfielders, they're undervalued and they're going to increase in price, outperform their current price. So I think you can look to go there also. As for defenders, I like Luke Ryan. Griffin Logue back into the side means that he now has that intercept role again, and we saw him hit a season-high score because of it last week. I think that if that's to continue, we can see him get back to that top-line defender, and he's currently priced pretty cheaply in comparison to the other primos back there. I think Tom Stewart's an option. I think Jack Crisp is an option. And the last one that I'd be considering at a cheaper price is Dyson Heppel. Moving into the ruck, there's not really any other options here except Gorn and Grundy. I think they're the guys that you want to be getting to. If you can't afford that, then I'd be going to Riley O'Brien. But outside of those three, you shouldn't be looking at any other ruck in my opinion. And going forward, forwards are probably the area in where there's the least value in my opinion currently. I think Fife is an okay selection. Zebel is one that I would potentially chase if looking for a primo. And then I also quite like Shy Bolton as well. Outside of those guys, I think a lot of the forwards like Steel Sidebottom, Kelly, Hunter, they're on the downtrend. They're going to drop in value and they're not quite right for picking just yet. So I'd keep my eye on those guys but I wouldn't go chasing them just yet. I've skipped through a lot of these targets as if I was to spend time and justify why I like those players, the video would just go for too long, guys. So I'll link in the description my Trade Talk article where I do go into depth on all these players and you guys can get a look into my justifications on why I think these guys are the ones you want to be bringing in this week. As for my thoughts and what you guys should be looking to do this week, I think the play is to go one up, one down, if you can. So I'd be downgrading one of these Fadden rookies, like your Campbells, for example. And then I'd be looking to put that cash on top of a Jordan Clark or a Jordan Degoe, Fantasia, one of these types, maybe another failed mid-pricer you have, and I'd be looking to go up to a premium, underpriced premium, so... For me, I'm potentially looking to target Tom Mitchell this week. If you can't afford the upgrade that you want, guys, there's no point half-assing it and going to a mid-price player or someone that you don't want long-term. It's only going to set your side up for failure. Instead, I would look to do the double downgrade. Going forward, I think we're going to have limited rookie options to choose from. This week, we do have a couple decent ones, so... If you can't afford that upgrade, bank the cash, do the double downgrade, fix some of your bench up. A lot of teams are rocking a pretty scrappy bench, so use this week to fix those issues and keep that cash for next week where you can do a genuine upgrade. Usually in these videos, I'll include my trade plans, what I'm looking to do, but at this stage, guys, I'm honestly undecided. I don't really have a clear plan. I am looking to target Tom Mitchell potentially, but I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get there yet. I do need to see some teams and some selections, and that's going to give me a better idea of what options I do have. If you guys are interested in keeping up with how my team's looking, for example, you can follow me on Instagram at AFLFantasyFreak where I'll be posting what my team looks like, what trades I'm doing each week, what guys I like, what guys I like as captain options, etc. I'll also be going live on Facebook to discuss teams when they do drop 
and then potentially just hang out with you guys, have a couple beers and, and watch the footy. So if you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure to drop this video a like. If you enjoy AFL fantasy content, subscribe to the channel, guys. And until next time, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills, and I won't stop until the cash pit look like fall leaves in a bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quick to say my piece, I'm so after school special.